Every story has a backstory, and at 12 News, we want to share it with you and give you a glimpse into the process of how the stories we cover come together. Everything from how we find a story, the challenges we encountered in reporting on it, and diving deeper into all the details of the biggest stories of the day. This is The Backstory. Welcome back. Attorney General Chris Mays has filed a lawsuit against a midwife after both a mother and her baby died under her care during a home birth. The midwife is told to stop practicing, but she's now accused of ignoring that order. Sarah Kankowitz forfeited her license this summer and agreed not to practice as a midwife in Arizona for at least 15 years. But just one month after signing that agreement, the 12 News I team reported on concerns that she was continuing to practice. Bianca Bono has obtained the state's complaint confirming our reporting. Bianca, what do you have? I hope the state does what the state's supposed to do. Parker Terry has refused to stop fighting for justice after the death of his wife, Jordan, and newborn baby, Mac. The two died after a home birth in Safford went horribly wrong under the care of Sarah Kankowitz. She was a licensed non-nurse midwife. And after a state health department investigation following their deaths and other complaints, Kankowitz surrendered her license in June, agreeing to not work as a midwife for 15 years. But Parker Terry has long feared that wouldn't stop her from practicing. That's basically what we ultimately knew was going to happen uh, based on comments that Sarah has made um, in the past. Just last month, the I-team obtained documents that confirmed Terry's concerns. Kankowitz was claiming she's a monotrice or a doula who has completed midwifery training, stating she chose to give back her state license. And it turns out DHS received those documents too, along with multiple complaints showing Kankowitz continued to take clients. State health investigators speaking with one of those clients, also finding a screenshot from her social media reading, ever one Wonder what happens in the state of Arizona when an unlicensed midwife tries to continue practice? Let's find out together. Kankowitz is now finding out and facing a lawsuit filed by Arizona's attorney general. I'm grateful that they're doing their job and that they're taking this seriously because it is a serious thing and frankly I have to live with it for the rest of my life. The civil complaint asked the court to find that Kankowitz is violating the law and guilty of a class six felony. Parker Terry hopes criminal charges come next. There's laws that are made for certain reasons, right? It's to protect the, really to protect the, the public safety. And so hopefully that now the DHS has said that they've confirmed all the allegations and have evidence to come to that conclusion that, you know, that the law you know, works how it's supposed to work and that we see some type of justice for Jordan and Mack and for our family that has suffered. So Bianca joining me now for the backstory on this. Bianca, such an interesting story. And first of all, the thing that gets me and it, it hit me right in the gut is that you're watching this father now. He's left with these two mm -hmm. little kids. Yes. Yeah, this whole story was born out of just an unimaginable tragedy. I mean, they go from the happiest day of their life, he and his wife Jordan, welcoming in a brand new baby. And not only does he lose that newborn baby, he loses his wife in the mm. process. It's honestly, it happened in December of 2023. In today's day and age, it's hard to fathom that happening. And he's faced with that reality every single day. And fighting for justice for them is a huge part of why this story has continued and why the state has continued its investigation. It's very important to to Parker to continue doing this. And, and I wasn't even aware that uh, the midwives were still out there. Mm -hmm. Is there a certain type of person who decides, I don't want to be in a hospital, I want to have a yes. midwife? Yeah, who? It's a fair question, and it's such a personal decision for so many women to choose it, but it's becoming actually a lot more popular as the years mm -hmm. go on, believe it or not. Um, a lot of women I spoke to said they had their, ch their first child, let's say, in a hospital. They didn't like their experience. They wanted less interferences, let's say, uh, for medical interferences. They wanted um, to be able to completely have total control over their birthing process. But with Jordan Terry, she actually was a nurse and she wanted to become a licensed midwife. Oh. And so she wanted to go through the process herself. So her husband Parker said he really didn't know a lot about it, but it was very important to Jordan to go through this herself as she was hoping to guide women through this in the future, obviously, she never got the chance to do that, but that's why she ended up choosing the home birth. Yeah, really interesting story, Bianca. And you're going to stay on it, right? You're going to keep following. Absolutely. Okay. A lot more to come. Um, I will mention that Sarah Kankowitz is doing court on Friday. She has filed an answer with the court. She is denying these allegations and, allegations and plans to fight them. We'll, we'll see more of that on Friday. She was involved in a high-profile and violent crime that shook the town of Anthem. But the question is, is this young woman a suspect? 
or a victim or maybe both? That's the question the 12 News I-Team is trying to answer in a brand new series called He Made Me Do It. And the I-Team's Erica Stapleton has been working on this multi-part series for more than a year. And here's a breakdown of part one. All of a sudden, we saw police, and they said there was a shooting at, at Andrew Z. And then out they come, and we're like, oh, 22 seconds is all it took. Victims have gunshot wounds, right? Multiple gunshot wounds, yeah. But these 22 seconds don't show the whole story. The horrible things that, that happened to Helen, you wouldn't even want to see in a horror movie. Why do you believe her? This is He Made Me Do It, a 12 News I-Team series uncovering how a teenager from Vermont became a robbery suspect in Arizona. She's a danger. But whether she's also a victim forced into the crime. We were told that uh, you're a victim of human trafficking. I don't think they care. 22 seconds. Nobody, please help me. Yeah, and Erica joins me now, alive now, and uh, Erica, that's, it's a powerful, I saw the whole first piece and the second piece, it's really good. And I, what I like about this is we often report on these crimes as they happen, but you're getting into the why, exactly what led this young woman to that place. Yeah, and it's really pretty incredible what we were able to uncover. This started with someone who was close to the case, reached out to someone on our team here and said, hey, you should really take a look at this. And as we started going through court documents and realized there was a ton of video in this case that we could look at, we said, okay, there's definitely more to the story. Of course, what happened in Anthem is a tragedy and the people in that jewelry store were extremely affected. But as we started kind of looking at the layers, we realized that, oh, this girl, was in a situation that she didn't want to be in. So that's what we really uncover as we continue through this series. And it's really compelling, I think. Yeah, in an unstable time, she was 18 years old. She was back east, decided she wanted to come out here, correct? And like within the first few days, she meets the man that she would end up you know, being accused of committing this crime with. Yeah, it's pretty, again, remarkable. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's striking how quickly something like this could change and how quickly you might be able to find yourself in a situation that you don't want to be in. And what's scary is that we uncovered a lot about his background as well. So when you look at a young woman coming out here to go to school, she'd been accepted at Cronkite to go to school for journalism. She you know, had her whole life ahead of her. She had goals, dreams, and meets this person, and it was kind of a force that just put her life on a different trajectory. So as we go through the series, you'll learn more about her background, especially coming up in part two later this week, and then we learn more about his background as well. So it really just adds more context to what happened and what led up to that robbery. Yeah, and it's nice to get some depth in this for sure. Uh, okay, where can we watch this? When can we watch this? I know it's like, what is it, like seven parts, something like that? Six parts. Six Maybe, parts. we'll okay. see what happens though. Right. There's always room for follow-ups, I believe. <laughs> right. But first part, the jewelry store is out now, the full piece. You can find it on 12 News YouTube channel, 12 News Plus, 12news.com. And then at the end of each week on Thursdays and Fridays, we'll be putting out a new part to this story. So for the next six weeks, we'll be telling this piece by piece. And again, I want every Want to tune in. I think it's really interesting just to see what happened and the message that people can take away from this series. Nice job. Really well done so far on this. So Thanks, yeah, Troy. watch that if you get a chance for sure. Thanks, Erica. Speaking of heat, a Valley apartment complex has been without working air conditioning for months, and that has left dozens of renters suffering through our record-breaking heat. Some of them actually had to be hospitalized because of this. So now it's gotten to the point where the state's top attorney is getting involved in this. This is happening at the Buenos on 32nd apartment complex. It's near Indian School and Grand Avenue. People living there tell us their apartments have gotten as high as 90 degrees during the day, and that does violate Phoenix City codes. Attorney General Chris Mays recently filed a lawsuit against the complex and its parent company demanding they fix that problem immediately. So joining me now for the backstory is 12 News journalist Chase Golightly, who's been following the story now for weeks. And Chase, hard to imagine, you know, going a day without air conditioning, uh, but months. And I noticed they had some uh, window units going there. So what's the fallout today? How are they doing today? Well, Troy, it's certainly something you never want to fail living here in Arizona. As you mentioned, residents living here have been without proper working air conditioning for the past couple months. And you did bring up those window units. That is a temporary resolve for the situation here, according to city code for Phoenix. If the temperature for an AC system goes above 82 degrees, that's when the landlord steps in and they can provide those window units that are only able to cool down about one room. So even with those window units that are all around this complex, they're still having to 
deal with the heat. Now, some good news on this front is that we were back out here yesterday going to some of the apartments and testing those air conditioning systems. And fortunately for a handful of people, their AC units were around 73 or 74 degrees. But so one person told us it took them 65 days to get to this point, and they're just hoping it stays that way. Now, as you mentioned, the attorney general is getting involved, filing a lawsuit against the company here. And on court on Friday, the judge did order that the landlord would have to pay for any tenant whose AC system goes above that 82 degree mark. He says that the landlord on their own dime would have to pay for them to live somewhere else temporarily until they get the solution fixed. But while we did see some apartments were able to be in that 73, 74 zone, which is in line with city code, there's still a bunch of others that aren't in that situation that are still dealing with their AC systems not working properly. Yeah, and these aren't air conditioners like you may have on your house, right? These are these large chillers uh, that basically cool all the apartments at once. And it seems like it happens at least once Correct. a year. When one of these big chillers breaks, it takes a long time to get these parts. It, it's, it's quite, I don't understand why it takes so long to get parts, why some warehouse here in, in Phoenix wouldn't warehouse those parts. Right, you think that there would be something in here in the valley because like we mentioned this happens every single summer and these people said like again they've been dealing it for the entirety of really this summer. We did see that the apartment complex brought in uh, a massive uh, temporary chiller and I believe uh, during the court hearing they said it cost tens of thousands of dollars to rent every single mm -hmm. month. It was a temporary fix. It appears to be working from some units, but otherwise it, it's still going on. It's so widespread and I believe in that court hearing they said a total of 109 units are not, are not having that functioning air conditioning and they're still working to fix that problem. All right, Chase Golightly, nice work on this and I'm sure you'll stay on top of it as it works through the process here. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching this week's Backstory. We do this weekly on 12 News at 4. Please join us at that time or you can watch us on our YouTube channel and right here on our 12 Plus app.